know, people think you're crazy and weird and so forth when you get filled with the Spirit. But if you've never been filled with the Spirit and touched by the Spirit, you will think things are weird. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we want something called a real new life. A real new life. Real. Making it real. A real new life. And when you want a real new life, you'll do anything to get it. It doesn't matter what's what. You know, when even people call and want to come into the discipleship program, I always tell people that are trying to send them, they tell, they'll tell me, well, I talked to this person for two hours. I said, you shouldn't. Why? Because if he doesn't want it or she doesn't want it, they're gonna, not going to make it anyways. You can't force someone to want it. Nobody comes unless God draws them. And when God draws them, they can either accept it or reject it. Amen? Because we've got to come to the point where we're willing to do whatever it takes to get what he has for us. If you're not, you're going to miss it. Then people come and do time. And always miss. You might as well go to jail. Because that's where they end up. Either in jail physically or in jail with the demons. Imprisoned. But there's got to be a desire to really want a real new life. That's not one moment. That's every day. Everything that you do, every choice that you make, everything that's a part of this life, there must always desire to maintain a new, that new life God has given you. If you're not willing to maintain that life God has given you, that new real life, the enemy will steal it. So it's our responsibility to make it real, it's our responsibility to make it new, and it's our responsibility to maintain that life. It's our responsibility, not his. Amen? See, he paid the price already of the exchange. Now it's up to us to walk it out, to live it out, to love it out, and to express it out. And John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. There it is. We need to send us every scientist in the world. In him was what? In him was what? Verse 4, life. In him was what? Life. So if you're going to if you really want a real new life, you got to have Jesus. <laughs> in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to be a witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become his children, his offspring, and to those who believed in his name, who were born not of the blood or the physical, nor the will of the flesh, but of the will of God by God, by the Spirit of God. See, so you and I were not the offspring until we became born again of the Spirit. Amen? We were just carnal flesh, almost like an empty shell, but a house full of demons. 
Without knowing the life giver, there is no true understanding of the essence of life. Only the behavior, now this is so powerful, because this definition was given by the Spirit. He said to me, without knowing the, the life giver, there is no true understanding of the essence of life. He said the only thing that they'll know the essence of life of is the only, the, is the behavior of life's responses to human reaction. The only thing that, in other words, the world only knows the essence of life is family, wealth, the things of joys of this world. See, humanity only knows the essence of life in this realm, in this reality. But when you are born of the Spirit, the essence of life no longer comes from this reality. It comes from the true reality of the throne room of God. Because we are now His offspring. See, so for me and you, life is not what's going on here. We're here to assist the life from heaven, the true essence of life, into this realm. But to do that, it must be real, and it must be new all the time. Does everybody understand? Again, I want to say this one part one more time. He said, without knowing the life giver, there's no true understanding of the essence of life. In other words, the true essence of life that God defines. Only the behavior of life's responses in this realm of human reaction or interaction. You know, people have family reunions. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with this. Does everybody understand? I'm not trying to. People have family. I mean, those are life essences of life here in this realm. Our children, our family, this, thing. but that's not, that's, that's temporary. See, the true essence of life that comes from God Almighty frees you from these things. Because you live a higher level. You live another, you live in from another place. Even though you're living in here, what does the Bible tell us? We don't live, even though that we live here, we're not from here anymore. Amen? This is not your home. Don't make it your home. Amen? See, this is where people go get oppressed. They go in, in great deception. They get bound up because they're still making this place their home when it's not. It's temporary. Everything is temporary. The chair you're sitting on could disappear any minute. You could fall on the floor. <laughs> Everything is temporary. Amen? Man, I remember after my visitation from the Lord, that was so evident to me. I'd be leaning, that, leaning next to a tree and say, you're temporary. Don't go now, though. <laughs> Everything is temporary. In John 14, in verse 6, please. And Jesus said to them, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. Boy, that blew them away. <laughs> what was he saying? I am the Father. See, the world doesn't get this. They only, yeah, they got all these religions out there. They, oh, he was a great prophet. Jesus was a great, no, he was God Almighty. See, they can't comprehend that true essence of life. It's not real to them. It isn't new to them. But Jesus was saying, if you see me, you see the Father. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. In other words, show him. <laughs> and Jesus said, have I not been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? 
The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Oh, come on. That's phenomenal. God Almighty, the creator of all things, set a body aside for him so he can come into this realm. See, because they were expecting somebody different. <laughs> he blew them all away. Hey, they were expecting somebody that was going to abide by their, their laws in certain areas. Far be it that God would heal somebody on the Sabbath or cast a devil out on the Sabbath. People become worshipers of the Sabbath instead of the Lord of the Sabbath. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. Let's go a little further. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I said to you, who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you do what? If you love me, keep my commands. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. He is known as the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave your orphans. I will come to you. But he's saying, I'm going to come to you in spirit now. No longer will I come to you with a body. I will come to you in spirit. How? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus is the way of the new real life. He's attempting to make it real. He's attempting to make it new. And he's attempting to make it life-changing to his children by fellowship with the helper of all truth, the spirit of truth known as the Holy Spirit. That's just where many people lack. Uh, and again, I, I repeat this many times when the Lord asked me if I wanted to get off of drugs and alcohol or do I want a new life. He didn't have to explain to me. He imparted to me what he meant. I had to make that choice. The choice was give up everything. People, places, things, everything. Walk away from it into a new life. See, people are still not willing to walk away from their old life. They still want to carry their old life back with them. They want to still hold on to things. And until you are willing to really let go of everything and not even touch it, not associate with it, then you can enter into that place where there's a new life, and then he restores to you what's for you, not you. Because, see, we try to restore things after the new life, and we make a mess of it. In fact, for some things, it will never be restored because we tried to, and God didn't. Amen? And this is where we have to get to stay in that surrender mode, not survival mode. Well, I'm a new creation in Christ. Now God's going to do this, this. Yes, he's going to do it. And I said he's going to do it, not us. But the enemy likes to push us. Oh, I've been good now. I've been doing this. I've been clean. I've been this, that, whatever. I, I, I. See, the devil likes to bring you to you. Now you're, now you're rewarding yourself instead of allowing him to reward you. That's different. Remember, he's got a lifetime guarantee on everything. Amen? What you grab hold of and restore, there's no guarantee. That's why marriages are destroyed again over and over. That's why relationships, that's why children, all of these things, because people are still trying to restore it themselves. And Revelation 12, 10, please. Then I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. Who, who, what was the power of his Christ? The Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? 
For the accuser of our brother who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame the accuser of the powers of darkness by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their what? Testimony. Why? Because life to them became real and new. Now they got a testimony. Amen? Now they got something to share. Now they can release life. They did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. The testimony of a new real life is beyond worldly comprehension. That's why God says, be careful you don't throw your pearls before swine. Not everyone's going to accept your testimony. In fact, they're having, a, you know, I mean, after my visitation from the Lord, totally delivered and healed, uh, you know, my family still wanted me to go through all kinds of stuff, this, that, whatever. But God shut the door on everything. I didn't say nothing. He just shut it. And they were, you know, people that knew me from before were still waiting. Oh, yeah, he just went to religion. <laughs> I came out of religion. I got into a relationship. That was totally different. But see, the enemy likes, wants to always breach your relationship. That's why we must keep it real and we must keep it new. Amen? All the time, every day. That's why we must renew it every day and get refreshed every day, somehow reconnected. You know, this is where the enemy comes in and compromise, brings complacency and laziness, and, 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 he, and he brings things across our past to distract us or, or so that we, we put something in pri different in priority. Things are no longer in divine order. It just takes one slip for the enemy to come in. One pinhole in a boat. You don't know until you're out in the middle of the sea. And you can't swim back. Amen. Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited what? Patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock, and established my steps. He has put a what? Oh, hallelujah. A new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will what? Trust in the Lord. In other words, a new song of praise. Why? New praise of his presence. New praise of his reality. New praise of his real life change. Real. See, now you praise because you're changed. It's real to you. It's so real to you that you want to make it new all the time. You want to make it new all the time. I want, a, I want a new one. In other words, you want to refresh it all the time. Renew it, renew it, renew it. So that you never lose that touch. You never lose that connection. You never lose that voice. And you won't lose the promises. A real new life. God has given you a new life change so you can change the world. Why? Because many will see it. And you don't have to go out and preach. You just got to go out and let the character of Christ be manifested. Somebody will ask you, what's up with you? <laughs> then they'll ask you a question. And the Holy Spirit's got an answer for everyone. <laughs> John 10.10, 10, please. Hallelujah. The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have it what? Have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. 
The hireling flees because he is a hireling and not does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which I which are not of this fold, them I uh, also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my Father. Life beyond temporary existence this is the new real life we live a spiritual life in a temporary realm as a sign to the world that is dying the world is dying as that's why we need to bring life to humanity but we can't bring in other words we can feed clothe and shelter that's a platform to bring Christ Amen? God is setting up platforms all over the world. And one of the things that you and I will do is God will give you the wisdom to build a platform for Christ, to witness Christ. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, which means what? Alert. Now, can you be alert without God's presence? No. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Now, can you be alert without, or, or can you maintain God's presence without being consistent? No. Amen? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? devour resist him steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world then why are some falling and some not because there's those who are consistent and alert amen they're disciplined they maintain the routine they're allowing life to become real and new every day i said every day Amen. First John chapter 2 and verse 24. Therefore let that what? Abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will what? You will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. In other words, eternal life through the anointing. <laughs> it's the anointing that makes this new life real and new. And he's always encouraging us to make it real and new every day. Make it real and new. You know, Jesus said something powerful. He said, look, it, I didn't come to bring you peace. I came to bring you a sword. See, many people don't know how to use it. That's where the Word of God must be backed by the Spirit before it can become a sword. But if you're out of order and out of line, and anointing is not there, then it's just nothing but seed. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5, 16, please. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a what? A new life. Everyone say new life. A new life. You're a new life. Turn your neighbor and tell them, you're a new life. 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So that's continuously. Amen? Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and not imputing their trespasses to them. And has, commanded, has committed to us the word of reconciliation that we may be that testimony of sign and wonder. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's where, see, this won't happen if you don't make it real and make it new. Amen? Every day. If you don't make it real and you don't make it new, that new life will not be reflected. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for what? Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of, of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now listen, there are things that you and I go through. There are things where God's saying, let go. Yeah, but I have a whole storage unit of all of this stuff. Let it go, he's saying. But I got all this. But I got all that. Let it go. What? I mean, because it, when people come in, uh, uh, when, they, when they get born again, or they come in from living a life of destruction, they're still trying to save all the stuff that caused them destruction. Let it go. Who cares? You can't, God, you don't believe God can replace it? You don't think you can bring it back multiple times? Look at, I'm a sign and wonder of that. I was street bound. Living in a house that was foreclosed on. Had cardboard boxes as furniture, waiting to get thrown out any day. Looked out the window, wondered what it would like to be normal. I was dancing with demons, and they were tormenting me like crazy. No family, no nothing, lost everything. I didn't go back for nothing. After I got saved, the only thing I went back for was my wife. Because I brought the girl through hell. I owed her the truth. And whatever God wanted to do after that, he did. But then he restored my house. The furniture showed up on the front lawn. My car was in, uh, in, uh, impounded. The only thing I had was a limo. It was impounded. It came out. 46 Chrysler limo. That came out. I had to go to court facing another four-year minimum prison term. I got cut loose. Mandatory. Mandatory. Lost everything and, and bit by bit. Restore here, restore there, restore this, restore that, restore. I didn't ask for nothing. You can ask my wife. I didn't even ask to use the car. I didn't ask for a phone. I didn't ask for nothing. Why? I had everything. Everything I ever wanted and desired came. Him. My life was real and it was new. And I didn't want anything contaminating me. Nothing. And I still don't. 
And that's what making it new and making it real every day. Every day. See, the enemy waits. He waits and we skip a day, two days, starts planting seeds, starts getting your mind thinking another way in another direction. He's not stupid, but he's dumb. We have our round table. One of the things we were talking about was protecting one another from the voice of the enemy. See, you don't, when we participate in those things and causes someone to fall, blood's on our hand. Why? Because you had the ability to protect someone from the voice of the enemy, and you didn't. Everybody got it? Hallelujah. Revelation 3.14, let's speak it, please. And to the angel of the church of the Lord, the Seans, write, these things says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Well, hello. How do you stay hot? You stay in his presence. Without his presence, you get cold. That's why the Bible warns us, forsake not to assemble. He warns us over and over and over. But see, the enemy will put work, family, and everything else before the presence of God. When you begin to put God first, that job that's been interference will be removed, and he'll give you another one. Does everybody get it? Never allow that to become first. The presence of God is first. Why? So you stay hot. Amen? Verse 17. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy, and I know the word, and I'm okay. Come on, are you hearing? <laughs> and I pray every day, and I do this. But I forsake not to assemble, I become lukewarm. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's times when, you know, that's, you got to. Doesn't mean that you got to be at every single thing. But I was at every single thing for years. <laughs> I didn't miss nothing. I was at church two and three times a day. Of course, I was involved in the healing ministry and so forth. I saw miracles, signs, and wonders all the time. Hallelujah. All right. Verse 17, because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Look at when you lose your peace, something's not right. When you lose your peace, something's not right. What begins to happen is begin to rely on you. Verse 18, he says, I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in fire. That's revelation. That you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eyes say, that you may what? See. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him. And be, and he will with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear, not listen. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So we know lukewarmness is not building a platform for God. Many times we believe that the devil is causing us problems when God is al allowing the challenges to come. He wants to see how genuine you are. He wants to see whether you're putting into practice what he's taught you. The anointing that teaches us. I'm not here as a teacher. It's the anointing of Christ that teaches. Amen? I'm just a, a vessel carrying the anointing. 
but it's the anointing of Christ that teaches. And this is where people get their eyes on men instead of God. They get their, they don't, they're not looking at the anointing, they're looking at the person. And it's not about the person. Isaiah 59, in verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not, what, shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated from your God, Ooh. and your sin has hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has murdered perversity. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. Conceive evil, bring forth iniquity. They hatch vipers' eggs and weave spiders' web. He who eats of their egg dies, and from such that which is crushed, a vipers break out. You know what the viper eggs are now? Repent, break that curse off. Amen? Separation by disobedience, compromise. Laziness, lukewarmness. Well, listen, if a person's on fire from God, would they know whether to take the or not? Yes, they would. Because the Spirit would be saying, no, no, don't. Don't. First John chapter 5, verse 18. We get entangled in things and caught up in things and whatever and you know we're not going to uh, grab hold of everything we'd like to but if you stay in position and you stay in a place of resurrender all things are going to work to the good amen first john chapter 5 and verse 18 please let's speak we know that what Whoever is born of God does not sin, but who has been born of God keeps himself, and a wicked one does not touch him. Did you hear that? So quit blaming the devil. <laughs> You're the one that, you, and, you and I are the ones that allow the enemy to touch us. He can't touch us, only if we let him. Amen? And like I said, he throws those paper airplanes with messages. Don't read them. Don't read your uh, fortune cookies. <laughs> They're torture cookies. They're not fortune cookies. Don't go reading the horoscopes and all the other things. Oh, this is what God's going to do today. No, he's not. Here. You want to know what tomorrow brings? Here. <laughs> read the word. You want to know what tomorrow brings? Get, in the Holy, get filled with the Spirit and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh, verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The whole world deceived. We know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. I got a lot more, but I don't think I need to go there. Amen? Praise God. Remember, a new, real life. It's real. Make it real. Keep it real and keep it new. And you will maintain life all the way home. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I'm asking, Lord, that you would protect the seed that's been imparted and bring to remembrance your message that has been imparted in us today that we may keep the life that you have given us real and new and refreshed every day for your glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.